Now the first thing to notice in this question is that it says that the cylinder is at rest. So of course what this means is that the net force acting on the cylinder must equal zero. So let's take a look at the forces that are acting on the cylinder. We'll represent the cylinder as a point particle, and then we have the gravitational force mg pulling down on the cylinder. And then if we look at the picture, we can see the cylinder is connected to the string. So there's a tension force pulling up on the cylinder that is keeping it at rest. So as we said, the sum of these two forces that are acting in the y direction has to equal zero. We will arbitrarily call the upward direction positive, downward negative. So that means that the positive tension minus mg would have to equal zero. We can add mg to both sides of this equation. So it cancels on the left side. And now we have a nice expression to help us calculate the tension in that string because the mass of the cylinder was given to us. It's two and a half kilograms. So let's go ahead and plug in the mass as well as 9.8 for g. And when we simplify this, we get a tension of 24.5 newtons. So that is the tension in the string, but let's go back to the picture and see how that helps us. So we have this puck that is attached to that string, and it's kind of spinning around in this uniform circular motion. And because it's spinning around in uniform circular motion, we know that the centripetal force that is acting on the puck has to equal its mass times its speed squared divided by the radius. So if you look at the picture, you kind of have to ask yourself, well, what is the centripetal force that is kind of keeping this puck traveling in that uniform circular path? And of course, it's the tension in the string. Right there, we can see the puck is attached to the same string that was connected to the cylinder. So that means that the centripetal force that's keeping it traveling in the circle is the tension in that string. So what we're going to do is make a substitution. For the centripetal force, we're going to put in the tension force. Now... We want, in this question, to calculate the speed. So we want to calculate V. So why don't we go ahead and solve this equation for V. We're going to move it down to make some room here. Okay, so we're going to solve this for V. We're going to do so by multiplying both sides of the equation by the radius. Next, we'll divide both sides by the mass M. And then finally, we will take the square root of both sides of this equation so that we can cancel out the squared on the right-hand side. There is our expression to solve for the speed. The radius and mass of the puck were both given as well as, well, the T was calculated from earlier, of course, the tension. So let's plug in the values. Notice for the radius, it was given in centimeters. It was 20 centimeters. So we have to multiply that by 10 to the minus two to get it into meters. And so when you do that, you will get meters and you will get 0.2 meters. So now we can type this into our calculator. When we do so, we get a speed of approximately 1.81 meters per second. So this is the correct answer to the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.